adored by many, but seen by few. The otter is an animal that has won over the hearts of most people around the world, yet few have taken the time to go and see them in the wild. This is exactly what I'm going to try to do. I'm heading up to the west coast of Scotland, to the Isle of Mull, to try and find wild otters. Within Scotland's Inner Hebrides lies Mull, an island of natural, untouched beauty. With rugged cliffs, ancient forests and sparkling locks, it's no wonder that so many animals reside in this haven. With over 300 miles of suitable habitat, Mull supports one of the highest densities of otters in the whole of the UK, and is probably one of the best places in Europe to see these elusive animals. But despite being numerous on this island, actually seeing and filming an otter is far from easy. The easiest place to initially spot an otter is when they're out in the water fishing. When underwater, they can actually close off their ears and nose, allowing them to stay underwater for much longer in search of prey. However, they do tend to come up for a breath of air every 30 seconds or so and this is when you can easily glimpse them. However, it is quite easy to confuse them with a seal or a diving bird, but the telltale sign of an otter is the flick of the tail as they dive back down into the water. I've been trying to find the otters for a couple of hours now, but it's so wet and windy, it's making it really hard to see anything. My line of sight isn't extending very far out to sea. So I think what I'm going to do is set up a camera trap, um, hope I get something in one of the inlets overnight, and then try it again tomorrow. There's nothing on the camera trap footage other than wind and rain. I know that they're there because I've seen signs of scat which means the otters are in the area but the camera trap footage is giving me nothing so I'm just going to have to head back again tomorrow and just hope for the best. Not sure if it's a bird or an otter. Yeah, it's definitely an otter. These otters are European otters, and despite them thriving in salt water here on Mull, they're not to be confused with sea otters that spend their entire lives out at sea. These otters require constant supply of fresh water to go off and clean their fur. I may be sat here feeling the cold, but these otters are literally perfectly adapted to their environment. You can just see how fluffy they are. Otters have two layers of fur a longer outer layer and an extremely soft, dense layer underneath. Insulating air gets trapped between these two layers, keeping them nice and cosy. Just in front of me now is a mum with her two babies and she's just brought in an octopus which they're all feeding from. It's just so amazing when an animal that's totally wild allows you to be in their presence filming them like this. After their big feast, all three of them are now cuddle up and the babies keep squishing mum. He looks so angry. <laughs> They're all cuddled up together having a nice snooze. I don't think you can get much cuter than a baby otter. So mums can give birth at any time of year, typically give birth to one to four mums and they remain dependent on their mum. 
up for about a year. That's so cute. It's literally so special seeing them like this, this close up. After being on the brink of extinction, this species has made a distinct comeback, one of our biggest success stories, and are now found in every county in the UK. But in recent years, the otter has faced many human-induced threats. These include habitat destruction, road development, the capture and persecution by fisheries, and the increasing use of pesticides polluting waterways. Luckily, there are people out there working to protect them. The UK Wild Otter Trust rescues and rehabilitates orphaned and injured otters before releasing them back into the wild. This is a long process, averaging at about 11 months in total. When they first come in, the handlers have to build trust, making them comfortable enough to feed from a bottle. Yet, after they are weaned, the opposite needs to take place. They need to rewild them and make sure they are afraid of humans before they can be released back into the wild. This ensures that when they are released, the otters have the best chance of survival. Although not all of us are equipped to rehabilitate an otter, I think it's important to remember that there are things that we can all do in our own lives to help otters and other wild animals that can have just as much of an impact. Think about the footprint that you're leaving behind and the changes that you can make to help make our earth a greener and wilder place in years to come. <laughs>